Hello, welcome to the August 18th, 2023 Bullfrog Action Group meeting. I am Save the Frog's founder, Dr. Carrie Krieger. I've been discussing Bullfrog upcoming events and uh, strategies with Chris Berry here from the city of Santa Cruz, who's been helping out Save the Frog's Bullfrog issues for over a decade. And let's see, we'll talk about the upcoming meetings in a moment. What we were doing right now, I'm gonna go back and share my screen. And we've got this bullfrog turtle strategy info that I took from the um, California DFW bullfrog turtle strategy working group and compiled it into here so that it's a bit easier to look at. These things right here, this is what the government of California came up with and they had it in a pretty hard to read format. So I cleaned it up here. These are their potential strategies. So these are the things that they are likely to be talking about as potential um, strategies that may even get voted on or approved by the Fish and Game Commission. So what we want to know is what are our thoughts on these? What more info do we want? And then we can use these so that we can be kind of talking in the same language as the government is. So we were talking about, this is a huge list right here. Dispatching bullfrogs in contests is a bit out of my um, realm. I don't plan to be going to the contest and doing any dispatching. And to me, it's not even the most important thing ever. So I don't, I don't know, we could give it a rating, but I'm just gonna leave it blank education campaign now what exactly they mean by these things there's not too much info but i'm certainly up for any education this is related to the pet pet trade use of bullfrogs as pets which is not even the main reason they get imported use of private land eradication of fish not too relevant to me so i'm just going to leave it out localized eradication i'll give that a five i don't plan to be doing it myself but i'm happy if the government puts in more resources into that. Ban sale of live bullfrogs. So I don't see any reason for live bullfrogs to be sold in California. So I give that a five in importance. Ban bullfrog imports here. We needed a comment because we don't know if this is referring to live or frozen. And I'm gonna say live imports. We support a ban, I do anyway. And frozen imports would be good to ban, but may cause difficulties getting um, proper legislation or whatever you want to call that. Well, I, I would also say it might be difficult Best. to get other stakeholders to buy in. You know, again, be, thinking of giving something to get the other high priority actions that we want. To get support from various other stakeholders. Okay. All right. So that would be something worth bringing up to get some clarity. I'm just going to leave that empty for now. Testing and monitoring regime. I, I'm fully into that. There should be plenty of testing, especially given the um, complete lack, absence of it currently. Research on discharge. All right, so that's saying, is water being discharged and it has chytrid in it or it's contaminated, discharge from the bullfrog holding facility. So I don't, I really don't even know if we need to be researching it. I mean, to me, it's the research has been done. It, it happens, chytrid. Well, and, and frankly, if you're not bringing the chytrid infected animals in you don't really need to do the monitoring yeah right? not necessary if live bullfrogs are not entering the state all right point of sale inspections i'm fine with that that should be taking place anyway that means at the location selling the bullfrogs develop commercial harvesting I do not think that's a good idea what do you think about that Chris um I have concerns about it I don't know how effective it would be and I worry about bycatch of other 
native species that we care about. So that would not be in the top of my list of priorities. All right, education campaign about the live markets, definitely important because that's probably where most of the bullfrogs are passing through. Raise permit prices. I'm fully up for that. I've mentioned that many times. I know that for uh, maybe like wolves or I can't remember, wolves, bobcats, coyotes, something that happened five years ago or so. They raised the price up to $1,000 and I'm sure that deters a lot of people. Um, so I'm perfectly fine with that. I know that currently they charge way less than they should be charging based on does the permit price, does the revenue from the permits cover running the program, and it does not, meaning that it is subsidized by the taxpayers to bring the bullfrogs in. Domestic bullfrog aquaculture, what's the difference between that and develop commercial har oh develop commercial harvesting from the wild i get it yeah that's saying taking them from the wild and there would be bycatch is what you're saying i get it people out there in the wild trying to catch bullfrogs and they're collecting the wrong um, species what about um i mean that kind of goes up to localized eradication what if you had to be permitted and take a test but not you know who knows if they would make people do that. Well, you, you can harvest bullfrogs now with a simple fishing license. You just can't commercialize right. it. So All right. can already I would say part of an education fishing. campaign might be to encourage people with a fishing license to catch bullfrogs, which we do at the okay. lake that I manage. Um, we have a couple dedicated fishers that are actually solely interested in bullfrogs. To catch. Okay. All right, so domestic bullfrog aquaculture. I don't know what that's going to solve. Then you're going to just, like, they're going to escape, from my perspective. You're going to have these big tanks of them, and they're going to escape. So I'll give that a one. Like Inspect shipments for illegal imports mixing species. I think that was point of sale. No, point of sale. That's point of arrival. Inspect right. shipments for illegal imports. I... I mean, assuming that they're coming in, illegal imports. Um, I mean, there should always be people in, doesn't, shouldn't that always be happening that anything entering the USA is going to be inspected or should be, but maybe this is at a state level. What do you think they mean by that? I think they mean in, increase the inspection frequency. There's never enough enforcement or inspection capability for the volume of stuff that's coming in. And that's true, whether you're enforcing invasive species importation or stream bed alteration permits, which the Department of Fish and Wildlife also issues. So that also speaks directly to raising permit prices. We're raising permit yeah. prices to pay for some of these services, right? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, it's a good idea. I just don't know where to rate it. It's like I wouldn't want to give it a five and then they like go all out thinking that's the solution. That, I don't think that's the solution. Well, maybe that's a three. Okay. All right. So important but requires raising permit prices. Or I'll say only possible. Only possible. If also raising. All right, research into population control techniques. Now, that's not going, going to stop the imports, but for the ones that are already here, I'm fine with that. I don't expect the government to be like the main, I don't know, they give out grants, they could fund. It would be interesting to know if there are um, research groups doing that. Just like I know in Australia, there's been research in the population control of cane toads. Have you heard of any anyone doing population control? I mean, that really I'm thinking of like injecting DNA or any something in them to stop them from reproducing. But I guess population control techniques could be anything that's done. So I'm certainly uh, I'll actually give that a five, because even if you stop the incoming bullfrogs there's still bullfrog populations in the state. Yeah, agreed. And this is. Um... You know, California has done it with Nutria most recently, and certainly there's probably some other species, but this is, again, a global issue with exotic species, and there's other um, areas of the 
of the state and the country and the planet where they're doing more research on management of invasive species. So I think this is sort of part and parcel of a, you know, this is fundamental to any strategy. Yeah. Okay. Water and reservoir management. Let's see what they say. What, if we can figure out what that means. Effective implementation will depend on local government's ability and willingness to implement measures. So as a water um, department staff, what do you think they mean by that? Um, I think it's basically it's not necessarily focused on water managers, but people that operate and manage water facilities, whether it's your own, whether it's a ranch with an irrigation pond or a water agency with a water supply reservoir. I think this is not um, quite as well phrased as it could be. I think there is a need for uh, managing populations, you know, for a landowner to manage a population in their pond. Um, but I, I think it's also a little bit unrealistic to think that, for instance, my agency could manage the bullfrog situation that we have without support from the state. So yeah. um, I think right. it's an important part of a of a holistic approach at managing this issue. But, I, it, you know, I can't fall back on the landowner because most people don't have the resources. And in our case, the bullfrog sort of just ended up there and then exploded. Yeah. So it needs to be a partnership, I guess, is the take home message. OK, should I give it a three or give it nothing at all? And just... No, I think three is. OK, wild. encourage wild collection. That kind of goes back to uh, develop commercial harvesting, dom dom domestic bullfrog aquaculture, encourage wild collection. I mean, that same thing that we already discussed before. So. I'm going to give that a three only with proper training to avoid collection of non-target species. All right, increase compliance with animal release regulations. I'm not sure what that means. I mean, there should, yeah, there should be compliance. Does that mean they're going to be enforcing it? Is that what it's saying? We're going to send out more rangers to look for people releasing illegally? I don't think that's actually very practical um, and probably not the largest problem that we're dealing with here. I mean, this is, you know, there are, there's a small community that probably releases frogs that they get in the live animal markets. But yeah. the reality is if you have a ban on live imports and people aren't selling live frogs, then this issue pretty much goes away, right? And you're right, we don't have the resources to do this kind of like, how would you logistically have the enforcement capability to even be marginally effective yeah, on this? to know where they are. And I mean, you need like investigators, like we're going to do a bus because we know you're going to be out there on Saturday releasing bullfrogs, unlikely enforcement. is difficult. All right, habitat improvement. Um, I mean, I'm always fine with improving habitat, but I don't know how that relates to this. Habitat improvement would be to uh, change the hydro period of the ponds. I don't think it's too relevant to it all. I'll say always good to improve habitat, but not the number one solution to the bullfrog problem. Mm -hmm. Prevent water contamination from shipments. Um, so I'm fine with that. No bullfrog holding water should be allowed to be released without um, decontamination. However, 
better just to ban live imports. All right, ensure shipments are lawfully obtained. Another compliance thing. So I don't, I don't know at what point they would be looking for that. Like there's bullfrogs, do you have a permit to get them in? I don't even know who does that or where that takes place. Like I would assume US FWS is at the port of entry and I don't know if if DFG or DFW is there. You think DFW inspects incoming shipments? Well, according to our um, friend who's formerly from DFW, they did used to do that. Okay. And they did pull permits when they found that there were violations. Yeah. Um, but I gotta say, I think this measure is pretty redundant with the, one of the earlier ones. Yeah. Um, inspect shipments for illegal imports. That's pretty much the same as ensure shipments are lawfully obtained, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, illegal, it seems like they were above number 14, they were talking about other species, which is irrelevant to us really. But yeah, everything should be legal. Is what's coming in legal? They kind of go together. So right. I'll just say, C number 14, or I'll say C number 14. Hi, couldn't hear you too clearly. Maybe Kenneth could put something in the chat. Hi, Kenneth, chat it in, please. Because you're not coming through too well. Contest monitoring and enforcement. I'm perfectly fine with that. What is it they're trying to enforce? A non-release policy at the end of the contest? Yeah, most likely, but it's a little bit unclear. Would require increased resources for implementation, just like anything. Magnitude of impact is unclear, but could be significant. I mean, I don't know if the frog jumpers are, they're probably getting their frogs from the wild, so wild California feral bullfrogs anyway. So at worst, they're just going to release a frog back into the area. So I'll put um, contest monitoring. Also, there aren't a lot of contests, right? I mean, there's one yeah. contest that we're aware of that's super high profile, but otherwise I don't really hear about frog jumping contest. Yeah. I wonder how many contestants there are each year. The frogs used are likely feral California bullfrogs anyway. Okay, encourage, allow the use of other species with lesser effects. A jumping contest? allow the use of other species okay well they're already allowed that's like in the ledge you cannot stop someone from jumping a frog that's already law in california already law in california um but i mean that's only going to work if there's no bullfrogs allowed because if one person wants to jump a bullfrog no one wants to lose to that person so DFW grant program. Hey, I'll give that a five. Definitely. DFW should definitely be funding valuable projects in universities, schools, NGOs, etc. Add non-native turtles to the restricted species list. Um, not really our deal, but yeah, I'm fine with that. So. Ban frog jumping contests. Um, I don't think it's the fact that you're jumping a frog that's the problem. It's which frogs are being used and where are those frogs coming from. And they're not going to be able to ban frog jumping contests very easily, and I don't even know... Uh, what do you think of that, Chris? Sorry, I was muted. I think that's a non-starter. 
Okay, let's just give that a one. Won't be um, received well in the public and more importantly, it is, is not the existence of contests that is the problem. It is what species are being jumped and where do they come from and where do they go afterwards. Barry, are you checking the chat? I will check the chat. Let's see. All right. We've got Nicolette here. Welcome. Wildlife biologist from Sacramento area, currently helping with bullfrog eradication at a land trust in Napa. All right. Welcome. Maybe welcome back. I can't remember if we talked because um, I think we were talking about a land trust in Napa the last time. And feel free to chat in what land trust it is. All right. Yes, Sherry, we will. Uh, we're recording this thing for a video to put on the savethefrogs.com slash bullfrog dash action dash group webpage, savethefrogs.com slash BAG. Promotion of programs for unwanted animals. Okay, where are you going to send your, your unwanted bullfrog if you have one? I think that's a good idea. Really, that's something that should should be taking place because that's pretty much anywhere. It's hard to find that. There's local herpetological groups who may have that kind of info, but if the government could, I mean, how hard is it for the government to do a little bit of research into where they would go and create a web page and put that info there? So I'm fine with that. What do you think about that, Chris? Um, I think it's a great idea, but I don't think it addresses a big number of organisms and um it's probably you know if we're talking about highest priority biggest bang for the buck yeah actions i'm not sure that's at the top of the list okay i'll say would be good but will not solve the bullfrog problem as such not a high priority add bullfrogs to restricted species list that's always been my number one there's already yes there's there's always been or not always but for decades there have been restricted species and the ability for the dfw to add new species to the list if they're found to do harm to native species and the bullfrog ticks the box for all you know all the requirements Very important. Increased information collection through permits. Uh, the permit is currently a one page permit that doesn't really ask for any info other than who are you and have you sent us in your $50 or so for your permit. Doesn't ask a lot of info. So what do you think about that? What type of info would, uh, would they be seeking? Let's see what they've written. Some additional info, maybe minimally helpful. Oh, great. It's going to be minimally helpful in the case of problems or for general data collection. Well, that's, I mean, they're basically saying it's not going to do much. So I'll just say, I, mean, I don't know. I a, a more thorough permit, I don't like filling out lots of paperwork. So just by having a lot of questions, you may deter some people from, from applying. I don't know what they're going to do with the info. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, it is a response to the relatively simple permit and the need for additional information, but um, it's not going to change what we already know about there being a significant problem that there may be other more tangible steps that could actually address. Okay, so I'm going to put, would be good to have more info and to make filling out the permit more time consuming hey government's supposed to reduce that but whatever more time consuming which could reduce applications 
but it is not that important. All right, bullfrogs. I think we also need to be, yeah. I just, one more thing on that. I just, I think we need to be careful that um, without adequate feedback in terms of DFW resources to actually enforce permits and review yeah. permits, all that information is maybe not that meaningful. Yeah. Now, if they had a permit that came through a web form and automatically flowed into a database rather than paper permits, it would be easy to collect the info and then someone could look at it whenever they right. wanted. But um, um, I'll say only of use if DFW has a plan for the info or if it will be made easily available to the public. Okay. Bullfrogs as bait, easy to implement, but likely. So they're saying we want to, that they are considering encouraging people to use bullfrogs as bait. You think that's what they're saying? Yeah. Okay. And that's, uh, I think in isolated situations, that's, maybe an effective tool but yeah um probably not a, a broad statewide only tool useful gonna... for fishermen yeah um could be included in fishermen information as a way for fishermen to assist more resources for meet more resources for DFW, sure. But I don't, you know, I don't have too much control over that. This strategy is a critical prerequisite for many other strategies, sure. But more resources for DFW's bullfrog program, not just like send DFW more money to hold more meetings and not get stuff done. What do you think I should rate that as? Um, I think you're right. Well, I'll just say they do need more resources and not just for bullfrogs, but given yeah. that this issue is about bullfrogs, I would say more issues targeted for bullfrog management. Okay. More resources specifically for managing the invasive bullfrog issue. Research into release inputs what is a release input this research would help resolve many uncertainties about the dynamics at play and the effectiveness i don't even know what all that means so it's research into something that's i don't even know what it is so we i, I know what the input is they're in they're being input from foreign countries into the ports of california and then making their way to the shops so i'll just put that low Research into live foods as vectors for disease. I'll put that as low. We already know what is, what the major issues are. Education campaign all encompassing. So I'm certainly fine for that. More people aware of the issue, more um, pressure on the government at a minimum and less people releasing or wanting you good with that five stars on education yeah i think i mean we can't okay. i don't know um, how you can argue against that people is a good thing okay all right good so what are we going to do with this well at a minimum we have this video to help educate people about these different topics i wonder if we should just review these first you real fast dispatching bullfrogs in contests is kind of not not something i plan to do education campaign about pets good use of can private we, can we step back to number one carrie yeah um if we're talking about how we support localized eradication why wouldn't we say yes we support dispatching frogs after contests okay yeah you, i mean we granted support. it's a small number but it's it's an easy sort of um encapsulated environment where you actually yeah. do have your hands on a bunch of frogs and you could um, get rid of them pretty easily okay what about alternatively um since there are um animal welfare people alternatively um 
partnering with local schools to adopt the outgoing frogs. And that's use a them. good idea. Yeah, we that, and that ties into that. After context, there's a recommendation down below about finding places to send frogs like that. So maybe yeah, that ties into that to match outgoing frogs with local biology classrooms who could adopt and care for the frogs for the lifetime of the frog, ideally. All right, good. You want to give it a ranking? Yeah, dispatching. I mean, it's called, it, I don't know, we kind of, I don't know what to say. Dispatching is should better be um, dispatch or adoption. So I don't even. Yeah, it might be ensure that frogs and contests are not released into the wild, I guess, is the take home message there. Um, I'll say we give five stars to not releasing frogs used in contests. Okay. All right. I'll just leave it blank. Someone can read that. I'll say, I'll change this. We'll make that a uh, bag bullfrog action group comments. Okay, good. Um, should I close this out? Well, let's, before you do that, is there a way to sort this and have like the five star items at the top of the list? Yep. So I'll just hit uh, sort by effectiveness. Oh, sorry, by bag rating. And nine to one, five to one. Let's move that up here. There we go. So we've got 14 points that we like. And really, some of these things could be combined. Education all-encompassing, education pets, education live markets. So let me now sort these all at an alphabetical sort uh, strategy right there. And those will fall together. Education one, two, three. Grants. Ban the sale of live bullfrogs. Add non-native turtles to restricted species list. I'm just going to get rid of this. What happened there? Did I just... Let's see what I did there. Yeah, I'm not going to rate that because that's kind of outside of our deal. Add bullfrogs to restricted species list. Ban the sale of live bullfrogs. Get a grant program going on. Lots of education. Localized eradication. So maybe we should put a comment in what we think that means it requires. So that means CDFW eradicating. What do you, uh, do we have any specific comment related to that? No, I think it's a good thing as long as people have a plan and it's not just sort of a random. Um, yeah. You know, we don't wanna have bycatch issues and we yeah. wanna have, this, have it be thoughtful. Okay, focus on critical habitats with a high chance of eradication success ideally conducted by and or under the supervision of a bullfrog eradication expert so as to prevent unwanted bycatch yeah, I would uh, um, rather than saying supervision of a bullfrog eradication expert, I would yeah. say uh, DFW district biologist, just because that's if I were doing a project like that here at Santa Cruz County, that's whom I would be talking to, I think. OK. All right, more resources. Yep. Point of sale inspections. Um, this is likely already law or required or the um, responsibility of DFW. Should I say that? Well, I think this is speaking to having more inspections of DFW 
and okay, then and uh, I mean, should I even mention that or just leave it? Or just leave it. Okay, this is. I mean, erase what I've written here. I would erase it. And okay. As long as we're clear that yeah. it means more point of sale inspections. More point of sale inspections. Yes. All right. Prevent water contamination. No bullfrog holding water should be allowed to be released without decontamination. However, better just to ban the live imports. Raise the permit prices. I'll say Kerry has um, provided public comment on the importance of this at multiple past FGC, DFW, WRC meetings. Research can I, and, I, yeah. Can I just step back on that one? I think it's yeah. important to acknowledge that permits should pay for the program. You know, there's a lot of additional activities being proposed here. So the permits ought to be able to cover that so that we're not passing off that cost on other people. All right, research into population control techniques. I'll put um, it's not the um, primary way to stop, I'll say. Always an important part of a, um, what's the word, like broad program. Sure. Uh, always an important part of an invasive species management program, though it will be most effective when importations are not adding to the population. I think one thing that's becoming more clear just by doing this process is that there's a lot of good ideas here, but yeah. the reality is if you ban live imports, you address half of the problems here. Yeah. All right, testing and monitoring regime. So let's see if we can tell what they're related to. Monitor disease better, but practical strategy would require. So I don't even know what they mean if they're just talking about randomly doing chytrid sampling in the wild. I was assuming that they meant testing at the at the markets, testing the imports. I mean that That's that, what I understood to be that true shouldn't too. Really cost that much. It's like you're not sending people out into the wild. It's like drive to what? downtown San Francisco, collect it. That I mean you can you can get university students. You could team up with this could be a perfect thing for the grants. Like we don't need DFW people doing it, and there'd be tons of undergrads and grad students who'd be happy. Well, the permit to fee DFW. should pay for it. Correct. Yeah. So let's say this. I'm ref, I'm not referring to wild testing. I know there's chytrid in the wild. I'm saying testing of imports and bullfrogs for sale is important and should be conducted by university students who are funded by DFW grants, which gets not only the info we seek, but helps train university students to be better um, biologists. And also Double establishes wing. permit compliance. And establishes permit compliance. 
Okay, good. So that means that for my, um, what I can do here, I can do this grid. Bag rating, five stars, do that and filter it for show me when bag rating is five stars. Now I've got this and um, I can embed this into the Bullfrog Action Group page so that only these ones are visible. I can even get rid of all these like really these things are from Ari and don't even mean too much to me. Um, Thinking of time here, Carrie, and there's, I yeah. got to get going to another meeting in a few minutes yeah. here, but I wonder if there's a way to distill these 13 priorities into fewer priorities that are more all encompassing, like education yeah. is three of them. You could say yeah. we strongly support education, we strongly support more inspections, and we strongly support a ban on importation of live bullfrogs. And you know, then maybe you could back that up with this process where the group met and we talked about, you know, these are the 13 five-star priorities. Okay. Uh, but sort of distilling it into a few talking points that would probably yeah. help your membership really communicate clearly and effectively. Yeah. I may even let some uh, AI tools sum up our conversation and see what it comes up with. But what I'll do, I'll put these, at least these three columns visible so that I can say, hey, these are these are strategies straight from DFW, and then I'll create a paragraph or two that sums it up into a even easier to think about thing. So I can reference this at the upcoming meeting as my comment that the Bullfrog Action Group has met twice. We invite people to go check out the webpage where we've even discussed and given comments on what we find to be the top 13 of DFW's 34 strategies. Um, everyone out there listening to this video or live here, Chris, can you tell us when you think people should be online this coming week for the um, FGC meeting, when that's taking place? You know, I wish I could. Um, oh, okay. We, we'll I, just I did look at the agenda link. and it's pretty unclear, but I'm going to probably check in with staff and ask when they think that item might be heard. Maybe you can put that okay. on the website. Later. Yeah. So everyone go to the Bullfrog Action Group webpage and we're going to give as much, we'll give links to the relevant meeting um, info. The reason we held this meeting right now is because next week the California Fish and Game Commission will be discussing or will be receiving updates on the Bullfrog um, program and it would be good for us to give some type of comment related to how you support these 13 strategies and that's on tuesday on tuesday coming up that would be the 22nd i believe of right. august all right good anything to add chris um well in closing i'll just say we had a really nice appearance of many california toads in my neighborhood this spring Thanks to the um, wet winter. I know that's not necessarily bullfrog related, but it is good amphibian news. And I think we need to share as much good news as we can. So I just thought I would share that. All right. I'll say that here in Virginia, there are tons of, uh, there have been tons of frogs and toads out as well. And uh, there's good habitat here and there's no invasive amphibian species eating them all up. So that could be a contributing factor. Indeed. All right, so everyone out there, um, thanks for your support of Save the Frogs, and uh, we will keep you posted with everything happening in the world of bullfrogs at savethefrogs.com slash B-A-G, Bullfrog Action Group. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks, Bye. everyone.